It's now my pleasure to introduce Helen Clarkson. Helen is head of Climate Group and of Climate Week. And um, this is very exciting to hear what she has brought already inside uh, her mind going on in the Climate Week New York so far. Meet Helen Clarkson, CEO of the Climate Group. Her team connects people in the climate transition by running campaigns such as the RE100 for 100% renewable energy, as well as hosting the annual Climate Week NYC. Hello, Helen. Great Hi. to have you on our show. Please give us your keynote. We are all ears. Thank you. Thanks very much. And thanks for inviting me to speak at this event. So, yeah, as you just heard there, uh, I'm CEO of the Climate Group. We curate NY, uh, Climate Week NYC every year. Um, and the theme for this year is building a better future. And we've really seen that conversation happening across the week, really thinking about what happens now as we come out of, or hope to start coming out of this pandemic um, and looking at how we, we rebuild and build something different. Um, but alongside that, uh, we mentioned there the, the RE100 and other corporate campaigns that we run. We're also Secretariat for the Under Two Coalition, um, which is a coalition of 220 uh, state and regional governments around the world. Um, and that's what I really want to talk about today, actually, is the role of states and regions um, in, in delivering exponential climate action. So as I said, the under two is, uh, represents about 43% of the world's economy, about 1.3 billion people, and includes states uh, such as California. Um, and they're becoming increasingly ambitious and uh, really representing countries from right across the globe. And some of them, you know, I just mentioned California, have, have GDP the same as small countries. So there's huge uh, potential there for uh, lowering carbon emissions. Um, and actually, the coalition has been named as one of the international partnerships with the highest potential for emissions reductions. Um, in fact, if you look at it, it's got it's got more than the annual current emissions of the EU. So that gives you a sense of the size and scale of the under two coalition. Um, and I think you know states and regions are often not talked about so much in the climate conversation. We hear a lot about cities, national governments. Um, so that's why I wanted to talk today a little bit about how states and regions are, are working. Um, so one of the things that we've seen through working with the under two coalition is um, really fast emissions reductions and often outperforming uh, national governments. So in um, since 1990, under two coalition states and regions have on average reduced their emissions by about 16% from their base at the same time that global emissions have risen by 42%. And that's because they often have very ambitious leadership agendas. We're seeing them now set out green recovery plans, net zero commitments, joining things like the Race to Zero campaign, and increasingly adopting net zero set targets by 2050 or earlier. Um, 19 of their members now have net zero carbon or all greenhouse gas emission targets, and more are expecting them, uh, sorry, we're expecting more of them to set those targets given the recent um, European Green Deal, the South Korean Green Deal, and so many positive movements. And so what we're doing is working with them to really use their influence on national governments to um, enhance their NDCs by the end of 2020. Um, and that's what we want to bring alongside the practical work that we're doing. And so some of the work that we do is to work directly on how those uh, states and regions uh, can tackle their emissions. Um, we have projects such as the Climate Pathways Project, the Climate Footprint Projects, which are about helping governments to set out those pathways um, and to really identify the sectors where they can cut emissions. So looking at something like the Under Two Coalition's Climate Footprint Project, uh, Pernambuco is a really great example of a state that's improving its gas, greenhouse gas emissions tracking um, and launched its first greenhouse gas inventory in November 2019, and now using that to inform regional climate policies and decide actions in different sectors of the economy. So getting very practical. And one of the things that we look at, particularly with state and regions, why they're often very influence, uh, influential is a lot of the time, um, you know, if you look at heavy emitting sectors uh, or, or sort of buckets of emissions, if you like, some are distributed across the economy. So economies tend to have quite distributed energy, but in things like heavy industry and, and other areas, it can be very concentrated in a region. So something that might only be sort of 5% of emissions at a national level could be something like 40 or 50% at a regional. And that's where you can start to really use regional policy uh, to tackle emissions. Um, Western Cape, another example, other side of the world, uh, we've been working 
through something we call the Future Fund um, on a cl climate pathway for the region, which will again help that government define priority sectors and actions they need to take for decarbonisation. Um, and they're particularly focused on the needs of young people, women, vulnerable groups, and really ensuring a just transition. Um, and our co-chair, when we have co-chairs for the coalition, one from a different, each different region. So Governor Newsom, California, uh, represents North America, the chair for uh, co-chair for Africa, KwaZulu-Natal, um, and they're working with regions across Southern Africa to advocate for green policies, protect the environment. And then Baden-Württemberg, one of the founder states alongside California, so Germany's third largest state, huge population of 11.7 million, GDP 500 billion euros. Um, so they're, as co-founder, real champion of uh, climate change policy and action, um, and doing lots of work there to really um, to push push action and then also show at the national level what's happening and, and support government policy. So lots of different uh, examples there, significant action from the likes of Scotland, another of our co-chairs, Catalonia and so on, and growing interest from places like India and South America. Uh, we saw California make a really significant announcement yesterday about phasing out fossil fuel vehicles by 2035. Um, and following Scotland's commitment to provide interest-free loans for people to purchase used electric vehicles. So those are just some of the examples I wanted to talk about, about how states and regions are really going after this agenda and pushing um, exponential climate action and working to build a better future, driving down emissions and support the work of national governments.